This is Twit. One, one topic that I definitely wanted to touch on here, hopefully my internet is, is staying stable, It's it's been a little weird uh, this afternoon, uh, is background kills. Because this has actually been a topic that's been a, a, suddenly a very heated topic the last couple of weeks. I feel like there's been yeah. a lot written about it, a lot of people uh, chipping in on this. In fact, the AMA that uh, the Android uh, team held, I think it was just last week, addressed the idea of of background kills and what's happening in the background, specifically for how the fact that that different OEMs kind of do this differently and developers don't know the best way to create their apps or kind of what what the rules are in the sandbox that they're playing in as it, as it relates to that. So um, I guess what I'm wondering is why or you know what the, what the reasoning is behind Google possibly going a little bit further than what's being implemented right now. What really stands in the way of Google just placing like a stringent limitation on what OEMs can actually do um, in that regard, maybe tying it to GMS agreements, something along those lines. I'm curious to know your thoughts on that. Yeah, this is, by the way, this is a topic, this is new. It's something that we, we talk about a lot and, and put a lot of effort in. There's a, I think there's a website, I don't know why I'm advertising this, but don'tkillmyapp.com where, where developers right. basically <laughs> yes. document the, the worst offending from a developer perspective. The interesting thing is, if you stack rank the worst of the worst uh, devices from a developer perspective, they may or may not correlate to some of the best battery life for the user. Um, and there lies the rub, right? The, the the device makers are doing this to increase to increase battery life, uh, which is usually a top concern in pretty much every sur user survey I see. Um, so they're doing it for a good reason, um, and you know they're doing it also for for the occasional case where not misbehaves, maybe there's a bug or something. Um, now the challenge is it creates unpredictable behavior, and that's also bad for the user. And so what's the right balance? And so we've been putting a lot of effort into this, um, but it's just tricky to get that balance right. And so for example, and you're right to bring up sort of agreement. So I think. Um, we've been changing the, the CDD, that's our compatibility definition document, which basically describes what a device, the rules a device must adhere to, to be compatible uh, with, the, with the ecosystem of apps. And one of the changes that we've made with Android 11 is that if a device maker does kill an app in the background, it has to alert the user that it's doing that. Uh, and that's really important because it educates the user that they know what's happening and also gives them an opportunity to prevent that, to disable that feature. So that's one thing. It's like, we want transparency. Like, if you're going to do this, uh, please make it clear to the user so they know what's going on, right? Um, the other thing is, is we are dispensing with allow lists. So this was an issue where some device makers would have sort of aggressive background application stopping, but they would have an allow list of apps that would be exempt from that. Uh, and we don't love that idea because it makes it very hard for a new app developer, maybe they're super innovative, uh, but they require some background activity, but it makes it really hard for them to break in because they can't get on the allow list because they don't have enough users, but they can't get enough users because they can't run in the background, right? So so we don't like that. So we, we made a change there. Um, and uh, and then, you know, we've been working through different device makers on different CDD uh, violations. The good news is that all the major device makers we talk to, when we sort of flag the issues and bring it up, they're really receptive. And so there's a bunch of big manufacturers with big flagships that have um, updates in coming down the pike in the next sort of weeks, months uh, that make this a lot better. I'm not going to say it's perfect, but uh, we, we're seeing a lot of progress. So like, there's definitely um, uh, room for optimism here. Uh, so I feel like we're making progress. It, it probably feels slow to the outside world, but 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 I'm seeing progress. Um, and then internally on the platform, you know, from a developer perspective, we're making some changes. So Android 11 has this new um, method on Activity Manager, manager uh, called Get Historical Process Exit Reason. Uh, and they, what that means is when an app starts, when your app starts up, you can query and go, why was I killed? What was the reason for me exiting the last time? Did the user close me? Did I time out? Or did something mysterious happen? Um, and so that also helps bring transparency to the developer, right? So the CDD will bring transparency to the user. This will bring transparency to the developer. So we'll have a clearer idea what's going on. Um, and then finally, and this is really the bigger point, let, you know, the work is also on us, is on the Android team, to make the operating system more resilient um, so that device makers don't have recourse to add these sort of um, behaviors that are fragmented and different on, on different devices. Um, and to that end, you know, we actually have been doing a lot of work over the years to to improve background activity and and, and limit it and make sure that, you know, and, and this is not, you know, it's, it's easy for an app developer to have a bug. And so we want the OS to be resilient to that. 
um, and, and then for the system to report that bug so the developer can fix it. So anyway, we're working on making the system more resilient so that we don't have to recourse to that. So yeah, there's no quick answer to this because it's complicated, but uh, we are making progress. And it, it's got to be it's, it's got to be a, a, an interesting dance between the developer community and the OEM partners and the operating system. It's like a three way yeah. tango kind of, you know, and and you guys, you know, doing the like doing, you know, in, in lieu of I.O. in this, you know, crazy 2020 that we're living in. You guys did the AMA with 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 the developer community. You know, what other kind of things are you doing for developers during this time to make sure they're being heard uh, so that they're able to, you know, react to what's coming in Android 11, be able to uh, benefit or make changes as they need to? How, how are you guys maintaining that communication? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, yeah, three-way tango is that probably my job description, actually. Uh, <laughs> and so, yeah, we, you know, we have this really vibrant uh, ecosystem of device makers and, and app developers, and yeah, it's actually a wonderful position to be in. Um, we, so for developers, we've been doing, um, you know, you've probably seen the 11 weeks of Android, and so we wanted to have this sort of regular beat of information in lieu of, of I.O. and produce some really great videos and, and, and educational videos. Uh, and then we've been just trying to be, you know, trying to be find other forums. And I think you mentioned the AMA, so we did the, the, the AMA uh, last week. Um, and then we continue to do our consumer advisory boards where we bring in a lot of developers and we get their feedback. And that's actually a really important part of what we do in terms of prioritizing different developer tools and de developer needs. And, you know, one of the exercises we do there is stack rank, you know, from most wanted to least wanted. Uh, and that helps guide what we what we do. Um, so we still have those forums open. And then, you know, the, on the device maker side, usually our format is every six months, we, we go out as a team to uh, somewhere in Asia, meet with all the device makers and, and do that this time it's it's we can't do that right now with travel restrictions and so we're kind of doing you know one-on-one -on -one, um, meetings with different device makers to try to get their feedback uh, so it's definitely lower bandwidth than normal years but it's not stopped we're you know we're still doing our best to be innovative and find different channels so yeah, and, and I gotta imagine the challenge, and and but w one of the questions that we had when this all first started, when I/O got canceled and things like that, um, you know, I think the AMA was really interesting. That sound, the eleven weeks of Android is really great. Did you guys explore some sort of live stream event, virtual event that could have been done for developers in lieu of I/O, or was that just immediately, you know, because I and I totally understanding if that's more of a marketing thing, or I know, and trust me, I work in I work in live events on the virtual side, so I know how logistical uh, the logistics can be. But I'm curious if it even came up uh, for in your guys exploring what you could do. Yeah, um, candidly, it did come up. We had a, an event. Uh, we had content. Um, and then, you know, the protests broke out in the U.S. and really globally, and we just felt like it was the wrong time to do it. And so we decided as a team that, it, you know, we were going to, um, you know, allow the world to focus on more important things, quite frankly. And and yeah. so we downplayed it and just did a blog post in 11 weeks of Android. And, uh, you know, and I think it's, it's you know, uh, I think it was the right call to do. I feel like it was the right decision uh, when I look back on it. It's, you know, it's a little... You know, sad from a team dynamic, you want to get all this content forward and, and do that. But, you know, sometimes there's bigger, more important things happening in the world than, than us. And so um, that's basically what yeah. I'm doing. 